Hi, this is Kim Sutton from Creative Mathematics. Welcome to my classroom in Arcata, California. I'm going to share some of my treasures on how to teach math effectively with simple, easy to use ideas that make math intensive, inspirational, and motivating to students. So join me because we're about to see a bank of ideas that are easy to use. Today's treasure is called Fraction Circles. This is from my book, Fractions, A Part of the Whole. There are three picture models of a fraction, area, set, and number line models. I'm going to model some different strategies from this book as treasures. One of them will be the fraction circles that are made from paper plates. We're going to make a tool that is an easy tool to make, but it shows a model of a fraction. In my fraction book, Fractions, A Part of the Whole, I call these circle fractions, but they're simply starting with the paper plates. So I can use any number of these paper plates to make these fraction circles with. So if you look in my stack, you'll see I have one, two, three, four, five different colors. I can use less, I can use more. So to make these with students, you're going to flip these over to the back, and I have students mark on the back of the plates at approximately what would be the center point of the circle. Remember, it's approximate. It's not going to affect what the outcome will be. Then I have them take two plates at a time, and from any point on the circumference of the circle, they're going to cut from the circumference along a radius to the center point, and then I have them just cut probably about a sixteenth of an inch past that center point. They're going to repeat that on the remaining plates, and usually two plates at a time is about as many you, as you can cut. So they're going to cut along a radius from the circumference just past that center point of the circle. And because I have five plates, my last plate I'm going to cut all by itself. I'll cut along that radius. Now once you've cut, you're going to take the stack, put them all back together in a stack, and align all those cuts. Then they're going to flip them back over and insert their hand along that radius cut. And once your hand's in there, then you're going to rotate, slide those plates around to show different fractions of a whole. So all I'm doing is manipulating those plates. So I might say, show me a half of your circle is blue. Show me a fourth is yellow. And show me another fourth is green. So they're just sliding and manipulating. And it takes a little bit of practice. As you can see, mine aren't sliding easily yet. Oh, I just hid two colors. So I'm looking at a circle where the area is my one hole. Half of that circle is blue, a fourth is yellow, and another fourth is green. Now I might say to them, show me equal parts of the whole. So if I have five plates, I'm really showing fifths. So I'm just going to rotate them till they're all about the same measure. And I can ask really simple questions of the plate like, is a fifth more or less than a fourth? Look at your plates. What do you see? If I'm looking at equal parts, oh, Miss Sutton, it looks like it's a little bit less than a fourth. You're right. I also use them to get a response from students for questions that are even outside of math. So. If blue represents water and green represents land, show me the relationship 
of land to water on earth. So they're just sliding their plates. I'm just hiding my yellow. But oh, oh, I got a lot more water on earth. Oh yeah, it's about 71% water to about 29% land. So these fraction plates are a tool for showing part to whole relationships. I can also use them with data collection. So I might say, show me a set of data where half my students, so I'm going to slide all my plates back together to start over, half my students picked cherry pie as their favorite. Now, there's half my data picking cherry pie, half my data picking blueberry, but what if I want to show, um, oh, let's see, one-sixth likes lemon meringue. All they're doing is manipulating here. Green's going to be apple, and blue would be blueberry. So if half likes cherry, I need the remaining half to be divided into a picture of what six would look like. Three six are equal to a half. Each one of these would be one of the six equal parts. So I'm just showing a variety of uses for these circle fractions that are made out of plates. I've stacked as many as 12 different colors and had students show fractions like 1 12th with the plates. This is all from my book called Fractions, a Part of the Whole. The number of plates that you use to make these circle fractions with is dependent on your grade level standards. Doesn't matter whether you're a common core state or you're a state that uses their own standards. Align the number of plates to the kind of fractions you need to show with students. For example, in the Common Core Standards for first grade, students are required to know halves and fourths. So if I were going to start this with first grade, I'd start with two plates. And we'd talk about halves, and we have an example of that. When I go to do fourths, I would have students cut two more plates. So again, second grade Common Core goes into thirds and force, you can make the number of plates dependent on the grade level. Remember, you can have a stack with a lot of plates or you can have a stack with two plates. You're still modeling the idea of fractions. This is a way to have students look at area models of fractions, also to look at what a circle graph would look like when comparing data. These plates are a student favorite, and you will so enjoy using these with students. It's a great way to do a show me activity. So show me one fourth red, one fourth green, one fourth blue, and one fourth yellow. How many of the parts are not blue? Oh, Miss Sutton, I see three fourths. So again, they're talking fractions, and that's the intent of the activity. Thank you for joining me. I hope you found this math treasure useful and practical for your classroom. I'm looking forward to doing more of these, so tune in, you'll see lots to come.